the Paris Opera, late 1800s. The beautiful members of the Corps du Ballet, preserved throughout history through the works of Edgar Degas. At first glance, innocent, pure. But the truth that lurked in the shadows, behind the curtains of this treacherous world, would shift the admirations of many today. My life was a plastic bag. That bag and everything in that bag meant the world to me because that's all I owned. Losing that is like, you know, that's your life. That's all you have. And you felt lost without it. The things I carry in my bag were soap and deodorant. They might not mean so much to most people, but they meant the world to us. I had a notebook that said, welcome to the black hole. One time I was out there and I was in the park and I was writing in the book and one of the, one of the uh, drug dealers slash pimp he was came over and um, he's like, what's, what's this book about? And I, I had told him that I was writing in this book about getting out of the black hole because he was the one that said to me, welcome to the black hole. Degas' ballerinas, whom he called petite rats, also did not have a way out of the sexually abusive culture of the Paris Opera. These girls entered the ballet between the ages of six and eight and endured grueling work six days a week to support their impoverished families. When you wake up in the morning, as soon as you open your eyes, you're in survival mode. So there's a lot to survive in 24 hours. You wonder if you're gonna eat, if you're using drugs, you're wondering where you're gonna get your next fix because you woke up sick. They were all types of different men. They were doctors, some were lawyers. Uh, even one time there was a judge, you know, they were all different types of men, all different professions. There was even cops. The men who preyed on the corps du ballet were a particular type wealthy subscribers of the opera, called abonnés, who financed many of the company's operations. The impoverished girls' careers and earnings were beholden to the advances, threats, and manipulations of these men, as they had the power to promote and supplement the incomes of these girls, or send them back to their lives of poverty. You're thinking, am I gonna survive? Every day was fear and loneliness. Every day was hell. Every day was hell for the Parisian ballerinas as well. The brothel-like culture of the Paris Ballet was so pervasive that members of society would have assumed that all successful ballerinas had succumbed to prostitution, even if they had somehow managed to avoid the subscribers' sexual requests. The unbalanced power dynamic and exploitation of these Parisian ballerinas has persisted across centuries and occurs today in what society, at a glance, calls prostitution. But with a closer look, is human trafficking in too many cases. One of the first times I went to Kensington to lend a hand, I saw a young woman, in her early 20s maybe, standing on the sidewalk carrying her plastic bag. A dark SUV pulled up to the curb and rolled down the passenger side window. She looked in for about three seconds without saying a word, then got in the car and drove away with a strange man. To this day, I wonder if she made it back to do it over and over again, or if she's even still alive. Human trafficking has been an unrecognized part of our world for far too long. Even before Degas Ballet, this evil has lurked behind the curtains of society. How much longer will we sit in the audience, oblivious to the 40.3 million victims enslaved today? Will we continue to let stories like Anne Marie's and Degas' ballerinas pass before our eyes, simply glossing them over with the stroke of a paintbrush? Will we continue this pattern for centuries to come? Or will we finally rise up and put an end to trafficking?